one interesting thing I think that, that, that is interesting to me is we both arrived to Canada from different parts of the world, although both from Europe, but from two different ends of Europe, about the same time in 96, mm -hmm. and sort of for completely different reasons. She came uh, to Canada as a bourgeois, young, rich girl, as an exchange student, you and I came to Canada. No, I'm just, I'm just not trying to, to sort of create a picture for people. That is not people. it. That's and not I, the picture. <laughs> and I, I came to Canada as a war refugee and from, the, uh, poor from, from former Yugoslavia. And the, uh, that's right. From Finland, sorry. Joking aside, it was sort of interesting. And so we find it very serendipitous that it happened because we ended up in the same place. We both started going to school at the same time, even though uh, I'm actually uh, three years older than Johanna is. And then the, uh, that's where we met. We met at university at first, and then we worked in another office for seven years before we started our firm in 2007. Okay. So, so that's a, I, and I think it's quite serendipitous because the uh, as we got displaced, if that uh, if that word can be used today, uh, as we got displaced, we got sort of situated or placed into into the same. So we worked in school. We met doing competitions, student competitions. Then uh, we started working together in 2002. Yeah, and so what uh, really actually happened is when we were working or when we were in school, uh, delayed this out, so no worries. Um, all the people who smoked were cool, and we didn't, so we weren't cool at all. And this is how we got to know each we're other. We're completely yeah. uncool people, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so anyway. Uh, but no, we, uh, we found an ama uh, amazing synergy in terms of design um, and what we wanted out of design, and I think that sort of helped, uh, helped to put the seed in to sort of to start thinking about what if you could do this for yourself, which wasn't very common in Winnipeg. There's been a real lack of new young offices, uh, startups for the last probably 20 years before we got started. There wasn't a single one. Um, it is not that big of a city, only 600,000 people or so, or 700,000 maybe. Seven, yeah. um, but anyway, so there, there was a real sort of lack of, I think, architectural tradition for, for quite some time uh, before we started our office. There was and great architectural tradition in 50s, 60s, 50s 70s, 60s. like great modernist buildings in Winnipeg. In, yes, Winni in, Winnipeg. in Winnipeg. Winnipeg was the hotbed. Like the, the, our school was amazing. We had this amazing dean mm -hmm. that brought, brought teachers from the states into the, uh, into the city and then most architects that got educated in sort of a modernist uh, era. Uh, uh, in Canadian architects is what, what I'm saying, have then actually um, gone across, all across Canada mm -hmm. and actually started their firms. And all, the, all the professors either studied under Miss Wanderow at IIT or under Frank Lloyd Wright or, um, or under Seren and so they were all, they, they dragged them in or they pulled them back to, to, to Winnipeg. Or I, I was a high school exchange student so there's very good tradition back home where uh, about third of my class would go on high school exchange. The idea being you learn a language and then you have a cultural experience and then you come back and you're a more rounded person, um, literally speaking, <laughs> going, going to the States, yeah. Um, you gain some weight, but <laughs> that's not the point, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so the point is, point is that, uh, no, I went on high school exchange, uh, got placed in this family um, that are volunteers in uh, north uh, west of Winnipeg, about two and a half hours in the middle of nowhere. The town that I was in was uh, population eight people and no <laughs> zeros. And it was just the most amazing experience ever. And there was nothing out there, I felt, in the beginning. Uh, the prairie, too, is this flat. There's just no topography whatsoever. And um, it was quite a shock. And so the first time I realized that landscape or, or your surroundings have something to do with who you are. And um, so that was my, s my introduction to Canada, whereas uh, Sasha's obviously was coming from um, sort of the war situation yeah. and then... They told us where to go. So know, they told us you're going to Winnipeg. Winnipeg. We're like, so okay, we're going to Winnipeg. Neither one of us had a choice in where we right. got located. So that was the, so I think, the connecting theme in that. Right. But so then what happened next is that uh, I guess once we started our own office, uh, the, the big thing was that we wanted to see if there's something that we could do in terms of pushing for something in architecture in Winnipeg. Given the, it was a reaction. It was easy. We just reacted yeah. to what was there, yeah. which was which not much, much, right? <laughs> so, so it's like, like we got to do something, right? That, that yeah. was how we started. Yeah. And I'm trying to remember what I was going to say, but uh, I guess the point being that then we committed to Winnipeg, and I think that's the part about the placement is mm -hmm. that uh, we had this running joke about everybody who graduated from the University of Manitoba went either to Winnipeg East or Winnipeg West. Winnipeg West being Vancouver and Winnipeg East being London, England. And so, so we would we would go to London, <laughs> yeah. uh, and uh, there would be more people that graduated with me in London than in Winnipeg. 
So I would have a better party in London than I could have yeah. one in Winnipeg or Vancouver for that matter. But I think what it takes then is that you sort of decide that you can and you should try to do anything that you can in architecture from Winnipeg. I mean, if that's what you're committed to. I, I think to. Th one of the key things is we entered competitions as all the other arch young architects do, right? And we won some competitions, like in the world. Right. So we thought, okay, in spite of it all, like, you know, we're here, we might as well, we, you know, it seems like we can do it from here, right? Okay. So yeah. now let's do it. Like that, yeah. was, that was basically where it yeah. started. Yeah. The uh, local newspaper wanted to write a business article on us because we were a rare startup architectural firm. And the, uh, so they came to the office, did an interview, a brief interview. They gave us, I think, a full page, right? Yeah. And, the, and pictures, we were just like flabbergasted. <laughs> we were in a hole somewhere. We still are, but it's sort of in a hole somewhere. And the, uh, and then we realized the article was supposed to come out on Monday, and we realized we, don't, we didn't have a website. So nobody could know what, what have we done. And we've done, you know, little things. We were only in business for nine and ten months. Mm -hmm. So we're like, shit, we need a website now. So the, uh, and iPhones were just coming out at that yeah. time. And we thought that we'd somehow figure out how we could use the iPhone. Well, that got inspired by yeah, that, right? Yeah, inspired by it. But so. that entire movement was actually, I don't know if you guys recall, but when I got the, my first iPhone, I was like, wow, right? This, this is never-ending screen, right? Screen yeah. is usually static. And, also and the proportions are the same, and then you obviously scroll sideways, so that's it. Yeah. And you get to see everything there is. There's no steps. Yeah. We love this idea of a single-page web yeah. page, even though it isn't, right? Yeah. But yeah. If, if you think of it, it's a single piece of paper. Yeah. What happened in 2007, again, when we went to decide that we were going to start the office, we went to the uh, corporation's office in Manitoba, and they hand out a business number. As you come through the door, it's basically a running sequence, and the number, therefore, is sort of a record in history. Um, in as time, history sounds pretentious. Well, no, no, it's I a know. history thing. But that was wow. the only time you could get the number. That's really all I'm getting at. And as we were walking out of the office, we were trying to come up with uh, you know, names for the office, like what should we call ourselves. We have such horrible last names. Nobody can pronounce them. Nobody can remember them. We never and wanted them to yeah, be the name anyway, that's right. right? And so and we said, you know, if we're ever going to have people working with us, they really should be working with us, not for us. Anyway, so we get grief for our business name all the time. Like clients. Clients meeting usually start with, we can't recommend you to anybody because we can't, can't remember who you are, we, yes. right? But it's the only number. We find you. Yeah, yeah, we tried yeah. to call this number, it doesn't work. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. Other thing. But as long as they're talking about it, it works. Yeah. So yeah. On, on a brand. And there's good abbreviations, like 546 is one, barcode is the other one. My mom's freaking We just got number. a new one, which was 546 whatever, right? Yeah. yeah. No, 54 uh, whatever. 54 whatever, yeah. So we have this colleague, uh, Jason Chong, uh, who's from South Korea. And uh, he used to be our professor, actually, at the University of Manitoba. And uh, he approached us in... Uh, November, uh, right? October, November. November of uh, 2010, uh, saying that there's a proposal called out from, uh, from the Canada Council for the Arts. Um, asking for um, for proposals to, to do the Canadian representation to the Venice Biennale. And uh, he said, he sort of said, would you like to work on this together? And we said, of course. Mm -hmm. And um, so He sort of had a, sort of an idea of thinking about th both all three of us being yeah. um, coming from abroad to Canada and thought, okay, there, there, there is something within this. And then we started, you know, bouncing. We started jamming for a few nights. We were just drinking and jamming the ideas around that. Mm -hmm. And the, um, we sort of stumbled upon whole, whole kinds of things that had to do with displacement as well as the, uh, this notion that the, the, where architecture is going today, we have no idea. It wouldn't be nice to, 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 to try at least to, to collect the work of up and coming uh, young architects in Canada. You know, a good portion of people aren't born there. Yeah. Um, and so that's, uh, that was one of the uh, ideas, that this would be a good testing ground to see what people think of this issue. And then uh, originally we had proposed just to kind of collect work from architects who had come from other places, but then it evolved into organizing a competition for young architects under 45 to submit work um, to um, the theme is migrating landscapes. And what we're trying to do is, is um, each of them submit a video three-minute video where they talk about what their cultural heritage, their memory bag, is basically consisting of, where they went to school, where they had a different experience, and how they settled themselves or resettled themselves into a new context. And then once they define that position, then they produce an architectural work or model uh, that gets settled onto a landscape uh, that we as curatorial team have designed. And this is just the wooden abstraction of a cultural, physical, social landscape of Canada. Each one of them was allowed to, to um, or actually not even allowed. The, when we started designing this landscape, we were thinking, well, we have to make it as simple as possible and nobody gets to change it. 
you get settled on it, you pick where you go. And then we, then we sort of, through discussion, discover that this is exactly against uh, what Canada is about, which Canada is a country uh, in, in which you're not supposed to assimilate. You're supposed to bring who you are and enrich us all with that. Yeah. So you're not, there's no, we're not accepting you, right? We're embracing you. We're embracing your culture. And the, you coming to Canada makes us better. And that's sort of, that's where we realize we have to make a landscape so everybody can change it. Mm -hmm. So the entire landscape became this, uh, the, this modular, very simple landscape. I'm not sure if you've seen pictures, but a very simple landscape that everybody can tell us how they want to modify it and for what reason. So that's sort of the, that, that becomes part, part of, of the premise of it. Of the and then it was juried exhibit. by some of the best uh, architects in Canada all across the country. And we've traveled it uh, through uh, seven now, the eighth com um, exhibition that opens in Winnipeg, the final national competition where we select, you know, uh, the finalists, the te Team Canada to go to Venice with us. We, don't, we have no <laughs> idea what it is, I right? I yeah. we necessarily know what's coming, other than we've been warned that it, it is a lot of, uh, you know, logistical organization and headaches and so on. But at the same time, I think it's one of those things that is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for, for anyone in our position to, to undertake. But speaking and of the project itself, I think it's going to well, get turned onto its head yeah, when it leaves Canada. Yeah, I was Canada. there. You were getting it. Because yeah. in Canada, okay, well, I'll, why don't I say it? Why don't you uh, say it? It sounds so much better. <laughs> while, it's, while it's in Canada, it's sort of almost documenting or recording a certain condition that we are all, if not aware of, sorry, if, if not sort of aware of in our daily lives, we recognize that it exists, right? When we move, when we take it out of Canada, we're taking it to Europe, which is becoming even, despite of the uh, European Union, is becoming more and more closed, if you wish. There's more and more xenophobia, there's more and more um, sort of closing of the borders or protection of the cultures and so on, right? And while we're saying this model works and look, look what it does, right? And uh, by just opening the borders the way we, do, we did, by accepting and embracing, not accepting, but embracing the other cultures, we have become this rich country that is unprecedented in the, in the world right now, right? And so uh, why don't you take a look yeah, at this? I'm trying to draw attention to that. And I think we're, we're somewhat qualified to speak about that in a sense that we both come from... Well, um, three of us. Yeah, well, three of us, but yeah, exactly. Come from cultures that are either very homogenous or have gone through all kinds of troubles because we've, we've hold certain attitudes about protection of culture. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of interesting to try to explore that. But if you don't mind, one more thing that I'd like to add is that when we got the um, competition uh, entries back uh, for the competition call, what was striking to us was that the work was so personal that it wasn't, it wasn't from a pages of a magazine, it wasn't very uh, fashionable or trendy, but there really seemed to be something that people are sort of pouring out of their souls and their guts onto these models and these productions of architecture that was quite surprising. And I think that's interesting to us, to try to see what right, it really right. is that, you know, if you really investigate what it could mean. Yeah, very little formal work, very little seductive, you know, models and images Imagery, that are like, yeah. wow, right? The, uh, all of them, you need time, effort, understanding, and the video to, 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 to even start to understand where it comes from. And the, which is so rare in today's architecture, we're just like bombarded, you know, there's a cool project here, cool project there, cool project there, cool project there. You're like, you're almost th nowadays forced to make your project cool so it can compete with coolness of Plus all the, the others. Canadians right? have actually taken that because they understand the story because mm -hmm. everybody has one. Mm -hmm. So they understand the story, not necessarily, they, they're, they're trying to understand the architecture, but they definitely understand the migration story and they connect to that, mm -hmm. so it's mm -hmm. a good way to bring people into the projects. So.